now. Sweet. Uh, hello, everyone. I am Diana DiMantua, um, and I will be guiding us on how to be a better ally to Jewish SCA members. I am going to start with a couple of disclaimers about what we will and will not be discussing. Um, I also want to make it clear that there are probably or possibly going to be some concepts in this presentation that you might find bothersome or disturbing or troubling. And I would encourage you to take a moment to kind of sit with yourself and maybe reflect like why it's bothersome to you. Um, if, if, there, if that is the case, um, I'm just going to go through the presentation and then it's basically an open floor for questions. So let's get started. Disclaimers, two Jews, three opinions. Um, this is a very popular saying in the Jewish community. Um, in many ways, other, other religions, other cultures are very universalist in their opinions. Um, however, in Judaism, there is a lot of room for interpretation um, and not all Jews are going to agree. So one of those things that I wanna say right now is I'm giving you my perspective based on research and information that I know, but someone who is more knowledgeable or simply has a different opinion um, may have a different opinion. Um, we are not here to have a biblical or religious discussion. This is not a forum for the Israel Hamas war, nor is it a forum for discussion of modern Zionism. Now um, in the, in the um, instructor bio, there's a picture of me holding a really cute little uh, French bulldog puppy. That is not my dog. This is my dog. Sorry, had to do that. Okay, um, the next thing I wanted to address is appropriation. Uh, and it's basically just what you see on the screen is, um, in my opinion, the purpose of the SCA is to educate and appreciate history. It is assumed that those who seek to create Jewish personas, whether they are Jewish or not in their mundane lives, are assumed to be acting with best intention and sincere desire to portray the Jewish people honestly and respectfully. So that is at least one perspective on non-Jewish people approaching Jewish personas of one singular Jew. So what I want to do is kind of talk about our understanding of, 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 of being Jewish, of being a Jew, of Judaism, um, because a lot of people don't really understand that we are an ethno-religion. Um, an ethno-religion is basically inherently tied to culture, to ethnic heritage, to physical geography. Um, they're usually only inclusive with, within a specific group. They do not tend to be universalist or seeking of others. Um, I've listed some examples of ethno religions, including Hinduism, um, indigenous practices of, like, of, of the Americas, um, the Maori of New Zealand, the Aboriginal tribes of Australia. Um, these are all ethno religions. Um, to kind of preface the question of, of converts, a lot of people view conversion into Judaism as a changing in religion. I am going to basically ask you to think more in terms of the ethno than the religion. Think of it less as a shift in, in, in religious practice and more as a tribal adoption what that person is doing is they are taking on the practices and the community of a particular group of people. And that adoption process happens to take, you know, a couple of years involves embracing our spiritual practices and whatnot. So I think it's important for people to understand that there is a tribal, social, ethnic component. We are not just a religion and then basically we have like the rest of our lives it is inherent in who we are as an identity so there are two elements of jewish identity that i want to touch on that i think are important for people who want to be better allies uh the jewish diaspora is what decentralized us from our original homeland and spread us around the world um people talk a lot about diaspora identities without really realizing what that means. Um, but I've listed here like kind of the different groups um, of the Ashkenazi who settled in Europe, the Sephardi who settled in the Iberian Pen uh, Peninsula and North Africa. They also 
particularly during the Inquisition, as previously mentioned, um, many of them settled in Central and South America as well during the Inquisition and then in later periods. The Mizrahi, which a lot of people don't really mention, but the Mizrahi are actually those who spread out around the Middle East. Um, and of course, there are many, many smaller groups that settled in different parts of Africa and Asia, um, including India, um, include just in, in many, many places. We are in Ethiopia. We are very spread out. And that is a, one of the reasons why, despite the fact that we are a tribe, we are very decentralized. And again, some Jews never left our homeland. They've been there all along. The second part of our identity that I wanted to touch on is our level of observance, because I think that's a lot of what, you know, a, another major identifier that people have. Um, and there are, even within these very, very basic levels that I've described, there are, there are even like, you know, there are inter, interlocking areas where, you know, someone might be a little conservative, but a little orthodox, a little conservative, but a little reform, what have you. But these people are all Jews. Um, amongst the orthodox, you have modern orthodox, you have regular orthodox, Hasidim, Haredi, all these different all these different groups of varying levels of belief, ideology, principle, but still Jewish. Um, there are groups like the Nature Karta and the Satmar. They are considered to be more extreme levels of Orthodox. You may be somewhat familiar with the Satmar if you've ever watched um, Unorthodox on Netflix, starring Shiri Hus. Um, frustratingly with that, a lot of people watch that show and think that that is kind of the definitive life of Jewish people. It is not. Um, we have the conservative conservative movement known as the Mazorti, uh, the reform movement. Um, there are Jews who choose to be secular, who maybe only minimally practice or consider themselves to be solely ethnic Jews. And we have atheists. We do have atheists. Um, Judaism has room for atheists uh, in terms of um, they don't have to believe in God as long as they don't, the God that they don't believe in uh, is only one. Uh, and the general attitude towards atheists within the Jewish, within the Jewish religion is that when atheists choose to do good, they are doing so without either a fear of reprisal or sense of obligation. They are simply doing it because they choose to do good. Um, and within the Jew, within the Jewish framework, that is valid and respect and, and worthy of respect. So there are Jews who adhere to atheists, who basically adhere to themselves as atheists, and will still practice our and will still, will still practice our rituals simply because they find comfort in that ritual and within that sense of community. So there are groups who identify as Jewish that the general population of Jews do not acknowledge. Um, amongst them are Jews for Jesus, uh, the groups who refer to them as Messianic Jews, uh, Christians who choose to misappropriate Jewish practices. And um, I know that there is a belief called a grafting um, that apparently is biblical uh, for the New Testament in which it is believed that there is some kind of inherent sealing uh, to basically connect uh, modern, I guess, modern Christians or those who embrace the New Testament, and now suddenly they're the Jews. Um, many Jews find the practices of these groups to be deeply harmful and appropriative. Some Jews don't care. Um, it just, again, we're not a monolith. Um, but the way I like to approach it is if you wouldn't go to a so to a, a, an, a public display of a indigenous event, if you would go and watch what they do and then decide that you want to take it on and go home and then do that, why would you do it to another tribal group? Why would you do it to the Jews? If you wouldn't do it to another group of ethno-religious people, why would you do it to us? So for us, that can be deeply harmful. So like, what are the things that you can actively do? Um, ask your Jewish friends how they're feeling. Um, this is a rough time for, for, for Jews in America and really around the world. 
Um, take a moment to like ask how they are. Um, you, it's so simple and you would be surprised um, at how appreciative people can be when just simply just to know that like someone is, you know, thinking about you and just like thinking, acknowledging, you know, the kind of trouble you're carrying. Um, we love questions. Um, we love talking. We love sharing knowledge. That is a cultural consistency that we have. But please understand that when you do ask questions, you are asking for emotional labor um, and being mindful of that. Um, if you are interested in Jewish ceremonies, we ask that you do not enact them yourself. Rather, participate in Jewish ceremonies and special events as a respectful observer. Don't be afraid to ask us if you can be included. We actually love that. We're very, as a culture, we're very open door. Um, I have never been turned down at a Shabbat table. And that's the kind of general attitude that we like to have. Maybe we're a little bit more protective now, but definitely ask um, because we can open our arms. Um, speak up against anti-Semitism, both within the SEA and in mundane life. Um, absolutely do. Don't be afraid to do so. Um, and then simply respect observance levels. Um, some Jews are going to want that big old bacon cheeseburger. And some Jews are going to be kosher and they're going to be strict about it. Um, some Jews are going to don't care if they write or carry a phone on Saturday. Some Jews are not going to do that. Um, and just kind of try to be respective of relative observance levels and don't associate the level of practice with the measurement of whether or not they're a Jew. They're, they're going to be, they're a Jew no matter what, whether they practice or they don't. Because remember, it's an ethno religion. Some things that maybe you shouldn't do. Please don't offer your Jewish friends a litmus test on whether you think they're cool. Um, ask them, don't ask their feelings about the Israel Hamas conflict or whether they're Zionists or what side they're on. Uh, it's, there's basically not you're not doing anything that's going to basically make them feel good about themselves, regardless of what the answer is. Um, you don't need to tell, you don't need to tell your Jewish friends about Jesus. We know, believe me, we know. Um, we encourage a lack of proselytization. Um, I understand that the Christian perspective in particular is that you are supposed to offer and if if it is the offer is rejected, you dust your shoes and move on. I can promise you that Jewish members of the society in and outside, they don't even want the offer. Um, please don't assume that Judaism is Christianity without Jesus. Um, the notion of Judeo-Christian concepts is actually not really true when you get into the nitty gritties of what we believe and who we are. Um, and it's basically, it's basically an assimilation comment, a, 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 an assimilation comment that we don't really adhere to. Um, please don't assume that holidays celebrated in the modern age as secular are also inclusive. Um, no Jewish person wants to hear about, well, why aren't you celebrating Christmas? I mean, it's not even religious anymore. It's still just not for us. It's not tied to our identity. Um, some Jews love Christmas. Some some are all about it. Some people have Hanukkah bushes. But don't assume, again, that we're this collective in that sense. Um, and a common misconception is that the Old Testament is what we follow. We do not follow the Old Testament. We follow the Torah and the Tanakh with the commentaries from the Talmud. Um, the Old Testament is actually a reworking of the Tanakh um, with some things removed, some things shifted around, um, some things retranslated. So it's not really accurate to say that, um, which I feel like is an important point if you're kind of delving into our identity. These are things that I would encourage peerage to consider, uh, the feelings of Jewish SEA members when events are in locations like churches. Um, when SCA ceremonies or events are templated in a way reflective of Christocentric ceremonies and events, 
and scheduling events while keeping in mind the Jewish holidays if you have known Jewish members. And that, my friends, is the end of my, of my presentation part. Um, I hope it was informative and not too brusque, um, but I am now open for like questions regarding anything. So um, feel free. Yeah, so feel free to unmute yourself and turn your video back on. Um, did you, um, excuse me, joining the instructor, did you want this part recorded as well or should we you stop the be. recording? Okay, we will leave it the recording on then. Let's see. Um, uh, Una Alessandra has a, raised her hand. Go for it. Okay. Um, I used to have a dear friend who was very American Orthodox, and people regularly would load his car for him when we had to leave a site early at the end of a Saturday event. And he finally revealed at one point that this annoyed the living hell out of him because they were assuming things about him that they had never asked. <laughs> uh, yeah, that kind of goes into the, the idea that we're a monolith, which as a culture, we aren't. People have different levels of observance. Um, there is a tradition specifically surrounding uh, Shabbat Sabbath, Shabbos, whatever you want to call it, of if there are certain, if you are observant, um, there are certain things you can do, but a Jew, a non-Jewish person can do it for you. Uh, the trick, however, is you can't ask them to do it. So if you and I were in a room and I was observant and I looked around and said, hmm, you know, it could, we could really use some more light in this room. I'm not asking you to turn on the light, but you get the clue. And I think people might have possibly assumed that even though they might have taken that idea and applied it to him. I don't know for sure, because obviously I wasn't there. Um, and that might have been where they were coming from. Uh, but yeah, no, there's different levels of observance. Um, so I, you know, I, I can't offer you like any solutions or anything, but like, that's probably where that came from. Angus. Hey there. Um, first of all, I just wanted to say thank you for putting this together. I really appreciate all the work you did. Thank you. Um, if it's okay, I wanted to speak a little bit to my experience um, as a Jew in the SCA. To your what? To my experience as a Jew in the SCA. Sure, go for it. So I'm originally from Scotland. I'm also Jewish. You know, my dad's side of the family, Scottish all the way back. Um, and, you know, I, I get a lot of the questions. I'm very used to all the stuff of, you know, oh, I didn't even realize that there were Jews in Scotland and things like that. And you kind of, you get used to that. You get used to responding in the most diplomatic way possible. Because you try and remember that these people, they don't know that you've had the same comment a thousand times already. There's only 15, and there's also only 15 million of us. So yeah. that is a relatively, there's a relatively small chance for encounters. Yep. And I mean, I, I am lucky in that I'm in Artemisia. And my particular barony, the barony of Arnhold, we have a very high percentage of Jewish members for the size of the barony and for the size of the kingdom. So for the most part, you know, it hasn't really been a huge issue for me. But where the issue has come in often is when we start having these debates about things like, you know, the, the swastika trip. And... Often the response that we we get is, well, it's from a different time, it's from a different culture, yeah. it doesn't mean the same thing. Yeah. But for myself, my persona is a Viking Age Norse persona. And it's kind of, you know, it's my specialist subject. And um, I, for a long time, I had a podcast that I ran 
about Viking history that was pretty popular. And I was invited to the Roland Festival, which is a huge Viking festival that they have in Poland every year. And I had someone that was willing to pay my airfare, hotel, everything, so that I could go and attend this festival. And I had to decline. And I had to explain to this person and a number of other people why I was declining. And the reason is that there is, especially in those sort of modern North spaces, there are a lot of out-and-out -out white supremacist modern Nazis. And often the way that they signal to each other is using specific symbols. Whether that be wearing a runic necklace that has the tear symbol on it, certain types of Thor's hammers, swastika on their trim, things like that. That is how they signal to each other. And then there are other people who genuinely and very kindly think that all they are doing is doing something completely historically accurate. And they do not understand how fraught it can be as a Jewish person or as another victimized group to be in that situation where you cannot tell if that person that you are talking to, given the chance, would like to end your life. Uh, there's been a large. There's been a large interaction between the um, at least on in in the online realm between uh, the Norse pagan and heathen community and the Jewish community, um, oh, in which those those top the topic of like s symbols and whatnot have been discussed. And in my experience, particularly with North America, at least with North American based uh, Norse pagans, is that. Um, while there are certain symbols that they want to reappropriate, they do understand that there are symbols that there's just no coming back from. Mm. Um, no matter what, that's just, it's not, they, they can't. Um, and so they have to, you know, and they have to make the choice, but at the same time, if they still decide to wear those symbols, they need to understand that there are going to be people who are going to choose not to approach them. There are going to be people who are going to feel uncomfortable or threatened in their presence, and they have to be prepared for that. Um, it's not our obligation to make ourselves unsafe to make others feel comfortable. Exactly. And the, the discourse that I have tended to have is really trying to explain to them, you know, I know you. I know that you bear me no ill will. You are horrified at the thought that anyone would. But if I didn't know you, if you weren't already my friend or a friend of a friend, then I might go to that event and feel like I need to leave. I'm not safe here. I might need to leave with my daughter because my daughter's not safe. And I think there is, because especially in America, there has been more of this general acceptance of Jews. There is this thought that, well, that, that's not a problem anymore. And... I find myself repeatedly having to explain to people like, well, my synagogue, we have a police patrol around the synagogue every Wednesday night when we do Hebrew kids and every, yeah, I think, every high holiday. Yeah, yeah, I think a lot of people, a lot of people don't realize that like, at least for nowadays, Jews, when they, when we're gathered, when we're in synagogues, when we're in our places of worship, um, Armed guards is now this. We're generally a culture of an of open doors, but mm -hmm. the way things are, the way basically the world has been lately for all over the world, um, we've had to close our doors and we've had to put armed men in our entrances, and that's a really scary thing. Exactly. Um, and this, going going back to your discussion on the trim, just so you know, and as I said, I know the people involved personally, both sides of the case i know the person who was king i also know the person who caused all the stink about it i mean i and think I've I both think of them for a long time but i think let that me, let me say I'm sorry. So i think that don't falls talk into over each other i think that falls into two jews three opinions honestly because i know there yeah. are people who don't really quite feel about it the same way okay 
Um, let, let me let me say one more thing on that real quick. Uh, the person who the the person who was king was doxed. He was accused of being a Nazi. He was accused of being a racist. And mind you, um, he and his wife have three adopted children, two of which they adopted from Korea, and one of which is black. Just, just so you know. Okay. So, okay. You, I'd like to move. I'd like to move on from this. Yes. We I have would, another hand up. Agree. Oyla? Yeah. Olga. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Hello. Alaska. Alaska works too. Uh, hi. Um, yes, two, two Jews, three opinions. Um, I, for the first 14 years of my life, I was raised in Soviet Union and, uh, nobody there let me forget that I'm Jewish. Are you a refusenik? <laughs> um, I went, I actually went the completely other way and became Orthodox for a while when um when the uh when the uh, religion was finally allowed in Soviet Union as it was crumbling around its ears in like late 90s but um I I'm a I'm more of the spiritual seeker I'm I'm the um well you said that there's atheist uh Jews uh I'm I'm the I'm the agnostic, polytheistic Jew who is Jew by ethnicity. That's who is, fine. Uh, yeah, it's it just, I don't. I mean, um, I personally think if, yes. if, uh, if a Jew isn't agnostic in at least one point in their life, are they really Jewish? We are that's with God, so that's, you know, that's what we yeah. do. Well, it's, it's, it, it just was a very weird experience where once uh once i moved to united states that for a good long while i didn't have to think about being jewish at all except in a positive way like celebrating holidays with family uh one of my teachers used to call it gastronomical jew just <laughs> eat, eat, eat yummy food and 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 do the seder or whatnot uh and it was a really nice um about 20 years until Charlottesville where I I felt like for a while American Jews forgot that they're not white. That there's still so many people who are just by the virtue of your birth and existence, you were second or less tier of um citizenship that the um that that whole a lot of uh, accusations that Jews cannot really be um cannot really be patriotic because they have the split loyalties and have to prove themselves and uh I do uh, I've been in the SCA for about 20 years now and okay. I have seen it I have seen it move. I have seen it move to the better because when I first joined, the conversation of swastika was "don't make waves." It's historical, even though it has been um, um, banned by the College of Heralds to use as a uh, to to be used as a. Um, uh, uh, on a device, but uh, there were still. There were still trims, there were still embroideries, there were still uh, symbols, and but the conversations were starting, and as uh, and and we we know from leaked documents of the white supremacist uh, uh, groups on on the internet that they consider places like SCA, like the um, uh, like the um, say me medieval groups on college campuses medieval studies um very um fertile fertile grounds to um infiltrate and convert so i would encourage i'm sorry go ahead yeah go ahead I would say i would encourage anyone who um is interested in actively 
uh, being aware of anti-Semitic behavior to shut it down, to go to the um, Anti-Defamation League website. Um, they yeah. have a database on um, anti-Semitic anti symbology and anti-Semitic groups throughout the country. Um, if you are interested in knowing kind of what to look out for um, and dog whistle, you know, they also um, have discussions of various dog whistles. Um, yep. That is at something as an ally that um, that can be done to help stop um, anti-Semitism within and without the and outside of the SCA. Oh, I, I also I posted a link to a podcast um, uh, in the chat with a really extensive two part um, look at the swastika throughout cultures and how it changed uh, and what different uh, nations say, like what's the history with Navajo Nation and what and what uh, how how they reacted to their sacred symbol uh, being co-opted and and um, what an allies they proved to be. Uh, and it's a very complex, it's a very complex um, history and it's, um, mm -hmm. but I'm, I am happy we are having those conversations, but again, as the, um, as, the society at the entire United States society is changing and it is becoming more pronounced in its uh, bigotry and anti-Semitism. We have, we have to be more vigilant inside our society uh, and, and, and more, and allies need to be more mindful of how uh, any, any kind of minority group who is, um, uh, who is, challenged by the rise of white supremacy. It's like for us, it's escapism too. It's ACA is our love and our hobby. And we want to be, we want to feel safe there. So the earlier discussion of Teutonic uh, crosses and crusaders and um, it's like, what does your persona would mean to the other people? Yeah, I like I said, I think uh -huh. that anybody who decides to do, pursue that is going to eventually out themselves if they really do have like a sinister agenda. Um, there is a question in the chat. There's, yeah, so there's I want to go ahead and, and in the chat that. about I'd love to hear how you deal with the thought of being honored as my lord, my lady, when our people wouldn't have been able to be of that station in life. So one of the catchphrases that I'm aware of that the SAA has had before is um, uh, the Middle Ages as it should have been. Um, I think that part of the pursuit of the SCA is kind of an idealized history. Um, yeah, honestly, in reality, we, we wouldn't have been honored with those titles, but the way the process of, of gaining title in the SCA is entirely different from the, the real world history. And frankly, if you earn something, you deserve it. Um, so I personally am, am totally willing to like um, snap my reality suspenders. And, uh, you know, if I earn something, then yeah, I, I want to receive it. I want to, you know, you know, get what I get, you know, get what, what I get from my own hard work. Um, so yeah, I would just call that basically context within our own structure and not, not really worry about it over much. Personally, again, personal opinion only. Does anybody else have any questions or am I missing any questions in the chat? Oh, could I ask another question? Yeah. Um, so, um, how do other people feel about that? When, when, as, uh, when I was crafting my SCA persona, I kind of was looking for a happy life. I was looking for a, an escapism and not researching how our people were prosecuted here and prosecuted there and driven out of there. So basically my SCA persona, I have a couple of different personas and none of them are Jewish. 
because I just want to, you know, make pretty things and research about ha happier things. So, I, oh, like what brings no, you joy I, in uh, researching Jewish personas? Um, so I think what I found um, on specifically on the Facebook group for Jews within the SCA is that a lot of Jewish SCA members actively look for periods and places where Jews were able to experience advancement um, because they're there, but you have to look for them. Um, my persona, Diana de Mantua, there was a period um, in the late 14th, early 15th century, maybe it's 13, 14th, I can't remember right now, um, where there was kind of like a little internal renaissance for Jewish women within, uh, within Mantua where there was this explosion of like art and poetry and a, a, a woman wrote a Sador. Um, so I take, you know, I, I love researching that particular niche and um, based my persona kind of on that little period. So those periods in history are, are out there, um, but you have, you know, you basically want to find the time and the, the willingness and to go researching and find those little pockets of time. Um, and I'm personally very proud of being Jewish and, you know, kind of deeply invested in, in that identity and kind of wanting to be loud about it. Um, and that's why like, and this is my, Diana is my first official persona. Um, and I, you know, I took that love of, 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 you know, art and writing and poetry and, you know, our, you know, our spiritual connections. And for this persona, that's where I found my joy. Hashtag Jewish joy. <laughs> Thank you. Slightly infuriating SCA Jewish story. Sure. Um, when I was a, baby skating and I had just moved back to the United States and I was at like my third Pensac or so when that was the only event I could afford to go to and only when I went to all year and some white guy from Chimeris told me that my my name my actual Hebrew name was Yiddish and therefore not period which is all sorts of wrong in three little words and from that moment on, I was determined to be as loudly Jewish inside and outside the SEA as possible, just to kind of like twist the knife. And because um, before I was trying to like, oh, I should fit in. I should find a Gentile persona with a name that people can pronounce. Now I was like, absolutely the fuck not. You can choke on my gutturals, all of you. You come at me with 10 <laughs> syllables of bad Gaelic. You can handle two and a half of Hebrew. Like I was I was just kind of like, wow, the the ignorance and arrogance on display from white Florida guy really sent me. Um, and that is that is how I got my Hebrew name passed by the College of Heralds. So it's not quite Jewish I, joy, but it might be Jewish spite. I think I it would be Jewish. We're trying to do that. I'm sorry, Olya, oh, yeah, you're breaking up a I'm little sorry, bit. I'm sorry, you're breaking up. <laughs> I apologize for Trimaris, but we are we are trying to be better. Uh, where where people on the ground here are working to change the culture. I, I do not blame all of Florida from one for one Florida man. Also, I have known you years. You are a personal friend. I care about you very much. I can actually pick you out of a crowd. You're my friend. We've camped <laughs> down the road from each other. <laughs> Thank you. Any other questions? Comments? stories i kind of want to like touch a little bit on um like kind of the again kind of going back to the ethno thing is like i really want to encourage allies and just people in general to understand like the tribal element of who we are um we are a tribe um we are a tribal people um the fact that we're dispersed uh does not take away from the fact that we are a tribe um, regardless of, you know, where we might've ended up in diaspora. And, and personally for me, while I honor the fact that I have a diaspora heritage, um, my, my family, you know, when they were dispersed, they wound up in what is now, uh, Moldova 
and Ukraine um, and Bessarabia, which is Moldova, um, but all these different places, ultimately, where our people come from is a very specific region in the Levant. And that is the premise of what we are. We basically took our culture, created a suitcase for it, and carried it with us everywhere we went. Um, and the there, you know, and the fact of it is that I can go to Nigeria, I can go to Chile, I can go to Australia, um, and I'm always going to be able to find a Shabbos table. Like that, that you know, that those rituals might have slightly different aesthetic elements to them, but it's always going to be the same no matter where I go. It's always going to be consistent no matter where I go. Um, regardless of my capacity for that language, there's always going to be one language, no matter where I go, where there is a Jewish household that I could potentially communicate with, you know, with my host in. And it's really hard sometimes to kind of con convey how ingrained Jewish identity is and the sense of community that is involved. So for me, wanting to, um, what I would want our allies to understand is that this is not just like a thing that we do where, you know, you, you get up and you go to your place of worship and you do the thing. Um, it is inherent in part, even if you're not a practicing Jew, in a way it is inherent within your life. It's embedded in your life. Um, it's hard to explain those, to, to kind of convey those concepts. And I think also there are a lot of there are a lot of uh, concepts about our beliefs and how we view the world that there's kind of a default understanding of what they people think they know about our beliefs. And sometimes we don't even know like we don't you know, I didn't learn that Jews don't believe in heaven in the same way that other groups might until later in my life. Or, you know, the concept of like the way we view sin is entirely different. Um, there's just a lot of, con which kind of ties into the whole like Judeo Christian is like Judeo Christian doesn't really exist because our concepts for everything are actually different. Any other questions, stories, comments? Any allies who have questions about anything specific in Jewish culture they want to know about? Or concerns about appropriation or how they want to approach building a persona? Hi, Honor. Una. Hi. Um, two things. One, a story about a bad horror show mistake at an early SCA event. Um, we were renting a Jewish community hall and somebody even offered their very Jewish immigrant grandmother to check all the food and make sure everything was going to be done right. And while we're cleaning up, the seneschal starts telling everybody what, how he saved the fortune by getting chickens at the wholesale market because that kosher stuff is just throwing salt on things and he can do that. And how he cut the prices of the pies by three quarters by buying a big tub of shortening at the butchers and they check the label and it's reclaimed rendered slaughterhouse fats, which means it's grease melted out of blood. Nope. Yeah. Nope. Big nope. Yeah. They had to re kosher the entire hall. Yeah. There's it a really was, funny, yeah. um, yeah, there's there's a really funny story about a guy who he had Jewish neighbors and he was new to the neighborhood and he wanted like, you know, kind of do like a barbecue and he wanted to get everybody together and he found out that he had to uh, go to a kosher butcher. Um, but then, you know, when he would, when he went to cook the steaks on his grill, the grill wasn't kosher, so he went through all of that for nothing. No. Um, so yeah, I I can sort of see where that's yeah that's unfortunate. 
but um, the other thing is that uh, I knew a lady a very long time ago who had a Jewish persona in the SCA, was Jewish mundanely, who kept getting asked how she could wear polyester or how she could wear um, rayon brocade because the Bible says you're not supposed to mix fabrics. The Bible says a lot of things, you know. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm, an, uh, yeah. I'm a formerly Orthodox yeshiva student, and I can answer this. The actual oh. prohibition in the Torah is to not wear linen and wool mixed together on a single garment. It has says nothing about polyester. It says nothing about rayon. I can still wear a wool cloak. I can still wear a linen shift. What I cannot wear is an Italian suit that is made out of linsey woolsey, also sometimes called fustian. I cannot have a wool garment that is sewn with linen thread. These are the rayon and poly like these people think that they're being so clever when they don't even know how to read Hebrew. Yeah, um, we are a we we are a culture of litigation and legalese. Oh. I mean, we really are. Like we, you, to give you like a level of kind of argument that we have. I have had arguments about which Pokemon are kosher. Um, <laughs> uh, there are uh, basically the Talmud is a. Uh, I mean the way I like to describe it to people is basically it's a discussion of law that effectively breaks down to being a burn book of rabbis, sages arguing about the rules. And it actually kind of gets a little petty at some points. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it reminds me of like the burn book from mean girls. So a lot of the times when I describe it to people, I'm like, well, it's, you know, it's, it's our arguments and litigation, but um, we are very, like when we, when we make a rule like Shatnez, we are very precise and it's, it's, it means what it says. And so looking for the holes is kind of part of that practice. I also find it's really compare it is to when we when we have court cases today, like in the United States, and sometimes the litigation is specifically about edge cases to decide the limits of the law. A lot of the Talmud is talking about ridiculous edge cases, not because they assume that someone's going to fall off of a roof and impregnate someone. Yes, that was an edge case, but because <laughs> they're discussing the edge of a case so that you have a legal standard by which to rule something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, um, we, we come up with some crazy scenarios just to basically know like where the lines can be drawn. Um, I find it interesting that outside of Jewish, so there's two things about Jewish culture that I, I find particularly amusing. One, um, we have a habit of talking over each other. Yeah. Um, I, had to, I had to unlearn to some degree how to doing that because the way we talk to each other tends cultural overlap is a very common um, because we like to argue a lot. And also I noticed that uh, when I have been in homes in other, other cultures, um, the way Jewish children and teenagers interact with their parents is very different. Um, the conversations, not disrespectful, but questioning and in outside cultures, finding that like that type of questioning is not welcome or considered disrespectful, which I think is really interesting. Yeah. Um, okay, so, uh, we have another five minutes. Um, so we should probably any wrap up um, statements you'd like to make, Jana? Um, I, I hope that this was helpful to everyone. Um, I can hang out in one of the salons or something like that if anybody has like any any questions that they want to ask of me. Um, but otherwise, like I said, I hope this was helpful. I hope I was able to answer questions. Um, and yeah, I'm I'm kind of partially here. I'm partially here to meet other Jewish SA, SCA members and people who want to build Jewish personas and and foster more community with that. So thank you very much for attending. Okay, thank you. Um, please remember that the okay. chat is going to probably go away after this class is over. So if there's anything 
you wanted to, uh, there was a lot of resources that were posted, um, some books, uh, videos, history of the swastika and a, Defam a defamation league information. If you want to capture that, you should do that now. Um, and I'm going to stop the recording.